people, Attorney LaConya Murray here with another episode of Own Your Genius Podcast. And today, honestly, it's really just some random thoughts that I had and I just wanted to share. Had some events, some occurrences, just some stuff that happened last week and that made me say, hmm, something just told me to just share my experiences, talk about it, just in case it can help somebody. Oftentimes, when we're on this journey of entrepreneurship, we think that our experiences are singular to us. We're the only people that are going through these things. And what I have learned is that we're not. We're absolutely not. And if more of us would share our story or the journey, I think it'll free a lot of people. Oftentimes you see the highlight reels on social media, but you don't get to see like the ebbs and the flows. And especially as it relates to the mental part of this journey. And I'm really harp on the mental part and the mindset part of entrepreneurship because you have to have a really strong mindset, I believe in my opinion, to succeed on this journey, not to give up, not to talk yourself out of things, not to just be like, oh, this isn't for me when something goes wrong. Remember back in September when I interviewed Dr. Reba Peoples and we were talking about the long-term effect of childhood trauma and at the end of it, I was like, you know what? This confirms it. This is it. I'm taking my butt back to therapy because I go to therapy off and on and I really like the idea of sharing with someone without that judgmental piece. But And after that interview, I was like, you have confirmed it. I'm going back. So I did. I went back to therapy. I think last week was my second session back. I'm going every other week now because, oh, right? If you go to therapy, if you think about going, like you can kind of feel me on that part when it's just like, oh, like, yes, I needed to get that out. I needed to be able to think about this another way. As I was driving to therapy, so I was like, there are two things that I want to address because I got some issues. And one of those issues we got to talking about is my inability not to take a compliment, but to recognize or acknowledge the achievements that I've accomplished. And it's one thing to say, oh, yes, I've done this and I've done that. But it's another thing to say, I've done this, I've done that, and that's exceptional. I've done this and I've done that. And not too many people have been able to accomplish that. And that's where I'm at. I don't give myself credit for the things that I've accomplished. I shove them off as if, hey, anybody can do this. I remember when I had my oldest daughter, Trinity, my junior year in college, I had Trinity. And I had Trinity, didn't move back home as people thought I would or thought that I should. I stayed in Birmingham, took care of her, went to school, worked. Eventually, I graduated, got a job in Birmingham, leasing apartments, went from being a leasing agent to an assistant manager in a very short time, and was just really doing the thing, taking care of us. Life was good. And I remember my dad saying, wow, I'm so proud of you. I was like, proud of me for what? Like, why are you proud of me? And he says, because you did it. I was like, "I, I didn't do anything. I graduated and I'm taking care of my kid. Like, that's what people do. And he was like, no, 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 everyone does not do that. You do realize that. I'm like, no, this just seems pretty normal to me that if you have a child, you take care of them. And say, yes, maybe, but everyone wouldn't have the tenacity to actually stay in a city where they have no family to make sure they can get it done. Some people would have quit and you didn't quit. And for that, you should give yourself a pat on the back. And I was like, whatever. And honestly, up until (laughs) maybe last week, I've always been like, whatever, because That's what we do. From what I've seen, that's what we do. But I do realize and acknowledge that everyone doesn't do that. I guess it also matters what type of circles and what you surround yourself around, what seems normal and what seems extraordinary. Because if you're around people who make different decisions and you're doing something like this, I can see where I can give myself more credit. But especially once the internet came on and you see people in the hospital bed taking exams and things of that nature, you're like, oh yeah, I just did what I had to do to get it done. But who says that doing what you have to do to get it done isn't something extraordinary? Like even that in itself is something you should be able to look back and say, hey, I did that and give yourself credit for what you actually did because not everyone can do it. Not everyone would even have the mindset to say, hey, this is what needs to be done. So let's get it done. That's my whole point. Like give yourself credit, you know, acknowledge what you've done and it's okay to acknowledge what you've done. And that's what I was in therapy for last week. I was like, ah, why is it so hard for me to 
think that I'm something special. That, hey, I'm a person that's worth the fuss. I'm a person that, oh yes, I see why people admire me. Do you guys have this problem? Let me know. It's not necessarily a problem. Do you all see that where a lot of times people will admire you and you're like, um, why? Let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know. And so at the end of the session, a therapist was like, girl, you're a boss. And I was like, ooh, like when she said it, it kind of made me cringe a little bit. She was like, but you know, you're literally a boss. Like you employ people. And I was like, yeah, but. So I was still struggling a little bit when I left. But then the next day I was applying for this grant. They asked me about my team. They asked me about the journey, all those things. But when I kind of put it together, I was like, man, I am worth the fuss. Like I am literally a boss because one of the things that I realized as I was filling out that application is that I have two young ladies that work for me. I know one is 22 and the other one may be the same age, but I know that at 21, at 22, I I had a a one-year-old and I was working and going to school, trying to take care of my daughter and trying to see if I can graduate. Like I said, I would still hopes of going to law school, right? Yeah. But now Fast forward 22 years and my daughter is now working for me and our other team member is a single mother who's also in school and I'm providing those opportunities. Have you ever just done that? Have you ever really just taken the time to look at where you come from? We get so caught up on not even where we're at, but where we're not that we don't get to appreciate where we're at and we don't appreciate where we're at because we don't acknowledge where we come from. All the work that we've done to get here. And if you take something from this podcast today, this ramblings of me, is do that. Take the time to appreciate the work that you have done to get to where you're at. That doesn't mean that you have to be content about where you're at and that you have to not want more. You can absolutely want more. You can still be trying to get to where you're trying to get to. But listen, just take, just stop for a second and just look around and be like, dang, I did that. Like I said X, Y, and Z and I've done that or I'm almost there or I'm working on it. And that gratitude will actually give you fuel to keep going when you see that. Because I promise you, I was so filled with gratitude in that moment. And a lot of times when I get the opportunity to take a pause or when I just think about what I'm doing, not even take a pause and look back when I just think about what I'm doing. Like, okay, this is the client work I have to do today. And I'm like, this is the client work that I get to do today. This is the thing that I said that I wanted to do when I was, I don't know, I started saying I wanted to be an attorney when I was seven years old. And by the time I got to high school, I knew I wanted to work with business owners. All those many moons ago. And now that's exactly what I get to do. And every little part of my journey, even the parts that I was like, can we skip this part? Why do I have to go through this? You know, the struggle and the test, you know, all of that was necessary in order for me to get to where I'm at right now. And what it does for me is because I've gone through that, I know I'm prepared for whatever comes ahead. They're talking about a recession. They've been talking about recession for like months and months and months. But for some reason, when I heard Gary V talk about it, I was like, <gasps> Like, oh my gosh, recession. And it did. It intimidated me. It put a little fear into me. And like, oh my gosh, do I need to do something else? Because there's a recession coming. Can I keep this going? I'm responsible for not only my livelihood, but two other people. Is this something that I can continue? Is this something that I should continue? Should I play it safe until this is over? And then I thought about it. It's like, chick, you've been through a recession before. You've been in business 10 years. You've been in business 10 years. So if you've gone through this before. It's okay. You might need to reevaluate and change some things up, but you don't have to quit and do something else. Just actually look at your data and see how you need to move forward. Hey, genius. We're going to get back to the podcast episode in just a moment, but first I need to ask you, have you heard of the Genius Insider program? The Genius Insider is our low-cost, high-value legal subscription program for innovative entrepreneurs who are disrupting their industry. Your monthly, quarterly, or annual membership gives you access to free consultations and document review so you can speak with an attorney before you put yourself in a janky legal situation. Your subscription also gives you access to contract templates and discounted legal services. Visit GeniusInsider.co, that's GeniusInsider.co, to learn more and apply. Now let's get back to our regularly scheduled program. Today's podcast is going to be a very short podcast, a bunch of random thoughts that I wanted to get out. I just felt like maybe this could help someone. And I did want to say that the feeling that I have, it's not imposter syndrome, it's not this feeling of, 
I don't belong here or I'm not good enough. You listen to episode 98, Dr. Peebles has some really good insight on that. But what I'm talking about today is not, it's not imposter syndrome. It is in fact not taking credit, not appreciating the work that you've done so far to get where you are. And that's a very important part of your journey and of your story. I always say, you know, baby steps are steps forward. And it reminds me of working out because I've been working out. If you follow me on Instagram, you see that when I do a workout, I share it to my story. But I've been actually working out consistently now for 10 weeks. And I do Peloton. I do another program, E2M. The reason I did it was not just to lose weight, but I really wanted to learn how to live a healthier lifestyle. I wanted to be able to incorporate eating and exercising daily and drinking my water and something to kind of hold me accountable. And that's what the program did. I've done two rounds. And the first round I did, I focused more on eating and working out a little bit. Then the second round, I was like, okay. And this is just me. You have to know who you are, how you can pick up new things. For me, I was trying to drink more water, change the way I eat, and exercise consistently all at the same time. I was trying to incorporate all of these new things. And my body was like, nope, way too much going on. So second round, I decided to strictly focus on exercising, just moving my body. Because that's something that I really want to do because I want to be able to move my body when I get older. I want to just, you know, be healthy and be one of those people that's 90 years old, still out walking, getting their steps in. So I did did that and then about halfway through I said I'm going to drink more water so I've been doing that and then the other day one of my kids says "Ooh, mom I can tell you're losing weight which is crazy because the scale <laughs> the scale says I have not at all and then I went to when I left the therapist's office she was like girl look at you you're slimming all down and your butt's looking right and I was like yes come through on the way home all these thoughts coming home from the therapist's office because that's what therapy does, right? But one of the things I thought about was like how I'm making little changes here and there and I'm being consistent with those changes and the results aren't obvious. And if you try to measure it against your big goal, it's going to fall short, maybe. But the changes are there. The changes are there. Like I can literally put on a pair of jeans today that I could not even get past my knees last year. But the scale says that... I haven't lost anything but like two pounds, three pounds. But I feel like life is like that. I feel like business is like that, that we go through this journey and we feel like if we're not doing something major, if we're not making the big investment, if we're not doing the big thing, if we're not following all the trends, then we're missing out and we can't be making the progress that we thought we were making. But if you show up consistently and you do those smaller things that are within your realm of genius, those things that you can do right now, because maybe you can't afford to do the thing that you really want to do, but you really just can't afford it, whether it's time or money to invest right now. But you show up in the way that you can show up and you show up in that way consistently, 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 time over time, you will see changes is you're consistently showing up in a way that moves the needle, in a way that matters. So if I was consistently eating chips and cakes and candy, I wouldn't be able to fit into those jeans. But I'm consistently making better choices. So maybe you can't afford to hire someone to build a funnel for you. But you can create some form of content and email it out to your list, consistently creating content and sharing. You can do that. Until you can do the big thing. And that creating content is a way for you to get noticed on some scale. And you say, well, why should I create content if I can't afford to send it out to the masses? And I'll tell you why. This is what I noticed for me. Again, this is just personal to me. And if it works for you, then it does. But when I create content and I share it, especially when I share it with my email list, I've noticed that we get more leads. And that's because I'm staying on top of people's minds. So even if they don't need us right now, if someone mentions trademarks or there's an infringement or something that has to do with business and legal, my name will come up because now, because I've created content and shared that content, I'm top of mind. Even if that particular person that I sent it to doesn't need me. So they share then someone else shares and someone else shares. So that consistently. And the flip side of that is, I can tell you this because we keep up with the numbers. When we don't create content, when we don't share, where we're not showing up, we don't get those leads. And you can say, oh, well, that's a coincidence. Maybe, you know, one or two times it's a coincidence. But year after year after year, 
of seeing the same thing, nah, that's not a coincidence. That is what it is. So showing up consistently, even in a small way, matters. Like I said, I just had all these thoughts in my head and I wanted to get them out and I wanted to share with you all because I feel like somebody needs to hear this message, especially as we're entering into the last two months of the year. Maybe this year wasn't your best year. Everybody's like, oh, this year's my best year ever. Maybe that's not your testimony and you're like, ugh, just beating yourself up about it. Don't beat yourself up. Literally go back and look at the work that you've done to get here. A couple of things can happen. Like a couple of things will happen. One, you get to see the work that you did to get here. Like you get to say, oh, I accomplished this, I accomplished that, and I accomplished this. And that's really great. Ooh, but you know what? I'm noticing as I'm going back and I'm looking at this journey, I did do something different here and it doesn't look like it's working out, whatever that something different is. So it can be very, very helpful. And that's the takeaway. You know, if I had to say what today's takeaway of the podcast is, give yourself credit for the work that you have done. Give yourself credit. Give yourself the flowers for the work that you have done, for you showing up and for you being where you are and for you doing the work to get to where you are. Don't take it lightly. Don't say, oh, well, anybody could have graduated college or anybody could have did this, blah, blah, blah. Anybody maybe, but you did. So give yourself credit. The second takeaway is sometimes you have to look back. You have to look back just to see how far you really come. So while you're sitting here giving yourself credit, you got to look back. Look back at it. Look back at it. My bad. Sorry. Um, where was I? Okay. You have to look back. You have to look back. And looking back is a good thing. And as you're going through this journey, appreciate the journey. Don't just think about where you're trying to get to. Take time to think about where you come from. So all of this is kind of saying the same thing, but just in different ways, different takes on it. So appreciate the journey. And to appreciate the journey, you have to look back at it. Give yourself credit for all those accomplishments that you've done. Let me know in the comments if this resonated with you. Let's take this conversation over to the Mark Legal community. I want you to share this episode with three people and have them meet you there. But you know what to do before you go. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and rate the podcast. Until next week, I want you to keep building your business, growing your brand, and owning your genius.